Sodio, the deck works fantastic, my friend. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's up guys? Before we jump into today's video, I just want to give you a quick heads up. We have got a brand new series coming out called It Is What It Is starting on February 8th at noon Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to put that schedule up on screen for you right now. It's a really exciting series with my good friend and fellow YouTuber Country Fried where we are going to be building some jank decks in a semi-competitive historic format uh, just to have some fun and uh, hopefully build some fun stuff along the way. So please do mark your calendars. Check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun and go ahead and subscribe over with country fried as well so you can get all of the updates from both of us we will have updates on both channels so please do check all of that out now let's get into the video what is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video uh before we jump into this i've got a couple things to mention first and foremost please make sure you subscribe to the channel it really does help us out uh not only that but of course you are entered to win our kamigawa neon dynasty draft booster box giveaway uh, we're going to be doing that on February 23rd. Subscribing is only one of multiple ways to enter, so please do check out all the details. More of that on our website, as well as in a video here on our YouTube channel, which you can check out. It's on our landing page, so if you just go to our homepage, you can check that out. But uh, on top of that, we have a new audio setup, uh, and so I'm going to be testing some things as we go through. Uh, the, the levels of this one may be a little bit off as we're kind of learning the setup and all that stuff this is brand new from ground up i mean interface microphone even the boom arm is different so uh we're testing some of that stuff out so i apologize if the audio is a little wonky but we're gonna do the best we can with it third we got golgari mill today guys uh this is brought to us by sonio uh who is a fellow youtuber fantastic youtuber please go check sonio out i will link him down below uh does a lot of his own deck techs and things like that fantastic youtuber so please go check him out this is an interesting one, and it really caught my eye because, one, I love Mildex, uh, and two, Golgari is one of my favorite color combinations. But if you look through this, it's not readily apparent uh, where that mill comes in until you find the Pestilent Cauldron, <clears throat> which basically says uh, there are multiple effects on this, but the one that we're really interested in is pay one, tap it. Each opponent mills cards equal to the amount of life that you've gained this turn. Which is interesting because we've got a lot of life gain aspects to this list uh, to go through a few. We've got Glorious Sunrise, which we can utilize to gain three life every turn, so if we so choose. Uh, we've got Soren, which is one of the bigger ones, dealing 13 damage and gaining 13 life. In addition to that, though, we actually get to spit out those little 2-3 life linkers with flying uh, as well that really can do some work. Uh, we have got uh, the Cosmos Elixir, which theoretically can gain us some life as well. Uh, we've got Curse of Leeches, which on the flip side does have lifelink, but on the other side it obviously has some life drain, so we've got a little bit of a guarantee. Uh, we have got the Celestis, which can gain us life anytime it becomes day or night. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre, which can gain us life. And then uh, Cram Session as well is in here, and then Parasitic Grasp. Now. We've got a number of things in the uh, sideboard here, of course, thanks to that cram session. But for now, basically, that's the important piece of this. Uh, now, it's interesting because th to me, that seems like a very roundabout way to go through mill, which is why we're going to try it today, because that just seems perfect. Um, <laughs> now, a lot of the other stuff in the deck is very control focused. So we've got things like Infernal Grasp, of course, uh, go blank to not only exile the graveyard, which is in its, in its own right, a very powerful effect, but also discard a few cards. Uh, Balagad Recovery, gonna be able to bring stuff back, uh, or just play as the land, of course. Um, uh, Binding of the Old Gods, one of my favorite cards, honestly. Uh, just being able to blow up any permanent is fantastic. Uh, Culling Ritual, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value 2 or less, and then add black or green for each permanent destroyed this way. Certainly a powerful card, especially against those aggro lists, uh, and allowing us to kind of double up in the same turn, which is huge. And then, of course, sitting at the top, we've got Storm the Festival, which hits basically everything in our deck we've got plenty of powerful things between glorious sunrise soren binding the elixir i mean 
tons of power, powerful things that we'd like to hit off of Storm the Festival. Uh, and again, with that culling ritual, we might be able to get there pretty early. So we'll see how it goes, guys. This is going to be a fun one. We do have Field of Ruin in here, as well as Hive of the Eye Tyrant and Layer of the Hydra. So we've got a full teched out land package for this one. Uh, and again, Sonio, I just want to say a huge thank you, my friend, for sharing this over on Aether Hub. Please, guys, go check him out. It really would mean a lot to him, I am sure. Uh, and so everybody, go, go show him some love. But let's jump in. Let's try this out. We're going to be learning together, guys. I don't have any idea how this is going to go, but I'm really excited about this. Uh, so let's jump right in. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And do we like this hand? I actually think we do. I mean, this is a pretty strong hand. We don't have a lot of the like control elements, uh, but we do have quite a bit that we can utilize here. So let's go ahead and do this uh, and see what we can do. Hopefully, I would love to get the milling of the opponents kind of working. I think that would be really, really fun. I have no idea how likely it is to make that happen, but uh, Pestilent Coblin uh, Cauldron, wow, really does a number on them if we can get it working. Uh, okay, definitely scary, but we do have the Infernal Grasp in hand here. Uh, we don't have a Black Source is the only trick. Uh, and so, I mean, we do, but it's not really, obviously it comes into play tap, so we don't really have an option there, but hopefully later in the game we can utilize that and just kind of knock this thing out. Um, honestly, this in itself, the Soren is quite good, but we do risk uh, running it out, throwing out the little vampire, and then just losing it to the, uh, the elemental if they can burn the token or something. So, don't really want to risk that. Yeah, dude. Um, again, guys, I want to reiterate, this is a brand new mic setup for me. Uh, we picked up a Shure SM7B industry standard microphone. Look at that. Uh, but... This is brand new for us, so we're going to do the best we can with it, but this is very much an experiment, uh, and hopefully we can make it work. Um, this is kind of a tricky place to be because we don't have a fourth uh, land, which I would really like, uh, but I think we just hold up the Infernal Grasp. I think that's just the safest bet. Uh, we'll let that resolve. Uh, curious to see. They could very well have something like a Snakeskin Veil, or some kind of, you know, give hexproof kind of protection spell, but it looks like that's not the case, so we'll just go ahead and get this down now. If we draw a land off the top, we are in really, really good shape, because what we can do is drop that Soren, uh, drop the token, and then hopefully have a nice little setup against whatever they're trying to do here, so feel okay about that. Unfortunately, we didn't draw it. Uh, now, what we can do is, well, we've got a couple of options. Um, I think we play the Celestis, though. We really, really need the uh, the mana here. <clears throat> uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and take that, and uh, hopefully this allows us to get something down next turn. We do have the Culling Ritual as well, so if they do happen to drop a few creatures here, uh, we might, might be able to Culling Ritual. This deck tends to run very cheap creatures, uh, and so that does give us an out here. Uh, but we'll see how it works. Uh, yeah. You got it. Uh, don't love that, but... That does kind of show us that they don't have much in hand here, which is fantastic for us. Let's go ahead and take this. Uh, what do we want to drop? Um... I think for now, it's weirdly the culling ritual. We've got the Meat Hook Massacre. Look at that. There's our land. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, we can go ahead and drop the Glorious Sunrise just to gain some life. It doesn't seem super helpful, though, given that they can outpace us on that. So what instead I'm going to do is drop the Sorin, uh, and we'll just go ahead and drop this 2-3. Now, fully expect that they may have an option to just burn this out. They frostbite is certainly something that we have to consider here however uh they're gonna have to start burning those eventually and they probably will go for the soren hit uh if they if they need to here so well we'll see how this goes uh yeah i mean very very good for uh for the opponent here however uh if they don't have a fight spell or something we still get to kill this i wish these had death touch uh eventually we get to kill this we have the meat hook massacre in hand really wish we uh had death touch on these but we do it looks like get a turn here which is super super useful all right let's make sure look at the top card of your library you can reveal a card uh and put it into your hand if you do you lose life equal to its mana value so let's do that first if it's a land fantastic it is not i'm gonna decline uh as much as i would love that i think we have to decline there 
Um, I think the play might just be Glorious Sunrise. Uh, alternatively, we could Cram Session plus Curse of Leeches. Maybe that's a little better. Yeah, let's go that route instead. Maybe this is incorrect. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, but I do think we just kind of need something here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We could even do this. And uh, just to kind of protect Soren a little bit here, go this route. So I do kind of like... Um, now, this does have flying, so we actually can get an attack in here, and I will. This gains us some life, so we're just kind of trying to sit back and gain as much life as we can. We will go ahead and draw this. Uh, now, what do we put back is the question. Um, you know, weirdly, I think it's the curse. We'll see. I I'm not sure if that's the right call or not, but uh, all of the cards in our hand are really pretty awesome. So <laughs> at this point, we'll just see what happens. There is the Augur of Autumn. Fantastic card in these decks because it just allows them to do so much. Uh, now, what we're slowly gaining towards here, though, is a meat hook for exactly four, which we do have enough to maintain uh, this upcoming turn. And that just allows us to sweep the board here, put them in a position where theoretically they may not have very much. Uh, we already know they're a little light on things in their hand. Uh, and so that should help us out. Now, this is a bit questionable. They did go ahead and activate this. It looks like just to get uh, the Augur of Autumn off the top here, which is interesting. Um, all this is fine. We just get to sweep. Um, obviously, just going to block here. We'll gain one in that process, which is perfect. Uh, and then we can start, uh, again, ticking up this uh, Soren here. Uh, I suppose we should do this first, and I will do this. Uh, we'll decline. Um, let's go ahead and hit this for, uh, cancel. Let's be smart. Let's be smart. Let's attack in first. Uh, I have a nasty habit of doing that. Let's go ahead and do this for four, uh, and get this whole board out of here. Two augers and a bear, uh, for the price of, what, a pest and a token? Uh, I mean, that seems perfectly reasonable to me. I am going to throw the land out here. We do need quite a bit of land in this deck, so I'd like to go ahead and get that going. Uh, now, we did leave ourselves a little open here, and that might have been a mistake. We probably should have just dropped the vampire token, uh, but I think we'll be okay. We're back up to 22 life, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, we'll see how we do. Uh, for any major permanence that they do have to play we've got the binding of the old gods coming down this upcoming turn as well so we've got some options here i don't love our uh what position we left ourselves in here um however i think it's uh perfectly fine smart of them to only activate for four by the way that's something i see a lot of people kind of overcommit to um is they'll tap out all of their mana that leaves them with basically no representation or no follow-up plays such a good idea for them to do this only activate for four and then be able to follow it up with something like in this case a roiling regrowth well that's not necessarily uh, ex an exceptionally powerful card it still certainly helps them uh and so it's uh it's certainly something to consider here i think we need to just go ahead and drop this uh and we'll drop the uh pestilent cauldron as well um yeah and we'll just pass here it's going to start drawing us extra cards here, which is exactly what we need. Uh, now, they can get a massive attack in here with this layer, uh, and that is something we have to consider, of course, but we don't really have a better option at the moment, truthfully. I mean, we kind of we kind of messed up a little bit by getting rid of that Soren. We kind of threw that one away, so that was certainly a misplay on my end. However, um, I think we'll be okay, especially because we didn't even draw the card off of Soren. <laughs> Uh, so that was really a mistake, but it's fine. Um, they are going to just get a massive attack in, uh, it looks like. Uh, we do get to, I guess, do this, which I will happily do here. Um, we can just block here. This is a very resilient deck in that fashion. Um, really like the cauldron for that reason. It kind of gives us some options here, so from a single graveyard uh yeah i'll take that action gram session uh ooh. 
I'm gonna put this back. That might be a mistake, but uh, I think that's just the best thing we can do. All right, so we can cram session here, uh, draw or uh, pick up some stuff from the learn. Uh, alternatively, we can just drop Glorious Sunrise. <laughs> um, I think I like that better. Glorious Sunrise is just so good. I guess we can do both. Let's do both. Why not? Um, let's see. Let's get a mascot exhibition here. Uh, we can do the same trick twice here if we need to. We'll gain three life. We're just kind of putting ourselves in a position where it's going to be very difficult for them to really deal with us. Soren is a fantastic draw here. Uh, I'm actually going to decline. I don't really think we need to, uh, to draw anything here. We've got a full grip of uh, fantastic cards, in fact. So we'll see. We will see. Definitely misplayed a good bit on this game already, but um, I'm feeling okay about our position. I mean, we've set up quite nicely at this point. Uh, and so we can just start kind of pinging away with Soren. We do even have the hive and the lair. So just some things to consider is that we can just uh, push forward here as needed. Uh, let's do this. I mean, I think we just go mascot exhibition, right? Like that's probably just the best bet. Uh, it's just a really powerful threat. It's going to uh, throw out a number of different things here and certainly something that they have to consider. Um, I think we'll draw a card. I'd like to have as many cards in hand as possible just to be able to deal with some things as well as spit out tokens, of course. Um, and then on upcoming turns, what we can do is actually start milling the opponent out because we do have a lot of the life gain elements kind of squared away for us here. And drop that second glorious sunrise mill six every turn, uh, which would be kind of sick. Wow, really glad we played these out here because this can block. Now, obviously, they can drop extra lands, which is a bit of a problem, but fine. And truthfully, we've got such a high life total at this point. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, I think we just take the five and that's fine. Uh, now, it looks like they've got a fight spell. That's cool. Uh, I, I, it doesn't really matter to me, I suppose. Um, yeah. Now, for every kill spell they have, I mean, we get to... Uh, oh, they don't even really get a free attack in here, do they? Oh, no, they do. It's indestructible. Yeah, okay. I'm just not going to block. We take six. That's cool. Oh, no, we're at 26. Um, we do have to watch here, of course. They could have multiple things, but it looks like they just gave up. We A uh, war of attrition. Sonio, the deck works fantastic, my friend. Uh, we didn't mill them out, but let's see if we can do that in game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think I like this. Um, the only trick is we do need at least one more land, and I would love for it to be green, but we actually are okay no matter what uh, it is. I'm going to try it. So this is a bit of a sketchy keep, I understand. Uh, also, guys, we may only get two games in. It depends how long this one ends up going, uh, just because that first one was so long. Uh, but we'll do the best we can to get three and of course i want to represent the deck as best i can um again this may not be a great keep but it's the keep we took um yep we need a land if we get one land we can meet hook massacre get rid of this and potentially any other goblins they happen to play goblins is going to be a scary deck to face up against here uh but if we draw the right cards we'll be in good shape so if we can get a nice little three for one oh oh amazing all right. Uh, well, we definitely have to play it out for black, and I think we definitely just sweep for one. Pretty easy play here. Uh, it's not super exciting, I know, but it gets rid of two of their threats, so a nice little two for one, and uh, we obviously get that Meat Hook Massacre down, which is just a helpful piece of uh, interaction to, to gain some life back. So we will see. Uh, we get to save this as well for whatever they may uh, have for us, so... All right, let's drop this. Uh, I'm gonna drop that Curse of Leeches now. Just go ahead and uh, and get this. It's just a nice way to start draining the opponent now. And again, it's gonna offset that life total loss. Um, we've got enough lands, so we can actually just meat hook again if we need to. Uh, or we've got the, the Parasitic Grass. Wow, okay, we just get to flip it immediately. <laughs> Fantastic, all right. Okay, well, apparently that was very quick, uh, so I guess we will get a game three. That was fantastic. A lucky draw off the top with that land, but it certainly paid off. Let's go ahead and jump into game three. 
all right guys here we are for game number three now do we like this hand um to be honest it's a little slow uh but it does have the meat hook massacre which does give me some amount of hope i think we'll try it uh not optimistic overly so but i think it's worth trying um there's a lair you know i guess we drop the lair nah, i'm not 100 percent sure here uh this second black source is really what we need just to be able to meet hook massacre get some of this stuff off the field now this is a sign that this uh could be a number of different things now that's helpful because we do get to just blow that up with the field of ruin if we need to which does give us that second black source so some viability there uh which is very very helpful and another meat hook massacre okay uh well i think we just drop this and pass there's nothing else really that we can do at this point we probably end up throwing the balaget recovery out as a land here uh just to be able to uh to get what we need to get they have got a field of room as well interesting okay probably gonna exploit this i would imagine yeah uh just to draw a couple extra cards off of that shambling gas there's nothing wrong with that um let's see at the beginning of your end step if creature died yeah so they're definitely wanting things to die here uh cool very good all right i mean a helpful card for sure but it's not really doing much for us at the moment we just have to pass here now again we could have field of ruins on the uh undo sky ruins just to try and push some of that out but i don't really think that's the the correct play Finding of the Old Gods is probably going to take out that uh, Adolin here. Or, I mean, the Warlock class is certainly something we wouldn't want on the field. Got some options. Um, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. We are going to go ahead and uh, take out the Adolin, I think, here. We don't really want to be facing that much damage. Uh, and Adolin really, really adds up after a while. Wow, they just have another one. Okay. Uh, so, unfortunately, a bit of a bad draw for us here. If we get a black source, we can get rid of some of what's on the field, but we're still in a pretty rough position, honestly. So, we'll see what happens. Um, little curious as to... I mean, I like this deck. It just seems like a nice little Orzhov kind of uh, blow stuff up and deal a, lo a lot of damage, um, which is good, but don't love facing it here at the moment. Um... <laughs> So we can drop that down. Uh, we do have the Infernal Grasp, which can take care of that. And then we're down to, what, six exactly? But then that actually kills us. So that's not going to work. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we can gain three, but that only puts us up to ten. Ugh. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're pretty just pretty much just dead here, unfortunately. Um, definitely unfortunate that we didn't draw that second black source now again we could have gotten it off the field of ruin a turn earlier but i think we kind of had to kill that other adeline instead and so i actually don't think we've made a a wrong play here i do just think um you know we we just didn't draw what we needed which is fine it is what it is we're down to five they get to uh attack us and get us out of here so well done opponent this last two games went a lot quicker than the first one, but let's go ahead, guys. Let's chat about this list for just a moment. All right, guys. So Golgari Mill, uh, very interesting. Again, Sonio, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you for not only sharing this list on Aetherhub, but being a fellow content creator and putting out such awesome content. Uh, please go check him out, guys. Link down below. But how do we feel about this deck? Well, Truthfully, I feel like it plays a lot more like a control list than a mill list because there is only that single piece of kind of mill interaction. Now, that being said, the, the idea behind the list is certainly driven by trying to mill the opponent out. And so I really do enjoy that. I love the control aspect of it, to be honest. Uh, and I think it's well positioned because it not only controls the game, but it gains you life. Uh, and something that I've been kind of playing around with, as you've seen with previous decks that I've created on the channel, Things that uh, kind of bring in that life gain element as well as that control element, as they always have, are generally going to be a bit more resilient because not only can they deal with anything that the opponent has coming at you, but you get your life total in a position incrementally where over time, it's difficult for them to just take you out in a turn. 
Uh, and what that does is allow you the time to set up and get what you need, which is exactly what this list is trying to do with things like Glorious Sunrise, get Soren up there, get that Cauldron active, uh, get the Celestis active, like all of these little permanents that you get onto the field really do a number on the opponent after a while because it not only controls the board but it also gets your life total in a, in a range where it's difficult to deal with so well put together deck here sonio i really do again appreciate you sharing this and everybody watching i hope you enjoyed this one it was a really fun one uh unfortunately we did lose that last game but i think it was down to a draw i think I think if we had drawn a black source, we could have been in a much better position just to save ourselves a little bit of damage, which would have given us more time. So it is what it is. We had a fun time doing this one. And again, Sonio, fantastic deck. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Please share, like, comment down below. It really would mean a lot. And of course, enter the giveaway by subscribing to the channel. We're also almost at uh, now. I don't know what we're going to be at at the time of this re this recording going up, but we're actually very close to 6K uh, subscribers, which is pretty phenomenal. So I just want to say again, a huge, huge thank you to everybody in our community. Welcome to all you newcomers and to all you people who have been around for a little while. It's been a pleasure, my friends. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We'll see you again very soon.